previously on A Summer Adrift. We celebrated Owen's birthday <laughs> and wrapped up our time in Jackson, Wyoming with a day of tubing down our campside creek. After our day on the water, we all felt content with what we had accomplished in the area. Though there was still one more hike that we wanted to check off our list in Jackson, we needed more snow to melt before we could access it. We decided to bide our time elsewhere and circle back later in the summer to try again. For Owen's birthday, he explicitly asked me not to get him anything. So I bought him his very first fly rod at the expert guidance of Chase and Amy. Owen has always loved fishing, and spending so much time around the Tight Loops fly crew made him hungry to get back in the water and try his hand at fly fishing for the first time. Under the watchful and guiding eye of Chase and Amy, Owen set out to learn the intricate craft of fly fishing. Like learning any new craft, Owen had his fair share of mishaps, but he took it all in stride with a grin ear to ear. Owen started catching fish. Oh my gosh, Owen, it's a good size one. Yay! Let's... The minute I saw that smile, I knew he was hooked. And yes, the pun was intended. Chase and Amy's passion for fly fishing is infectious. Being around them when they're in their element is an absolute joy to watch. We felt lucky to be learning from people as accomplished as they are, and their generosity to share their knowledge is something that we'll always be thankful for. Oh, she's so pretty. Bye, girl. Do we look methy? <laughs> It's already attacked him like four times. After meeting up with our friend Jason, who we met on the road nearly three years prior, he invited us on an impromptu evening hike. There she is. After walking seemingly straight into the woods for a while, we came to a secluded little hot spring where we spent the evening swapping funny stories and basking in the warm water, despite the chilly night air. Since the first time we laid eyes on the Sawtooth Mountain Range, we've wanted to explore them, but for some reason, they've always eluded us. 
As we headed into the steep terrain on our first hike, we couldn't help but feel giddy seeing these breathtaking mountains up close and personal. As much time as we spend in this type of terrain, I don't think I've ever seen mountains quite like the Sawtooths. They're dense with craggy peaks that often felt hard to peel your eyes away from. Being that this was our first hike in the area, we wanted to get the lay of the land and try to summit a small peak as a warm-up. Before long, we arrived at the perfect place to stop for lunch and for Chase to get a couple of casts in before we got back on trail and headed for our summit. However, it started to become clear that Mother Nature had plans of her own. Ooh, up close and personal with the mustache. <laughs> Even though the forecast for the day was crystal clear, summiting during a lightning storm can be deadly. We stopped for a quick group discussion to determine our action plan based on the threatening system that was headed straight for us. The group decided that we should still try to get to the summit because we had already come so far, but under the conditions, we'd turn around immediately if we heard thunder, saw lightning, or someone got uncomfortable. As we started our last steep climb, we stopped frequently to check in with a thickening sky. We were going to try to summit Alpine Peak, which is up behind us, but we're trying to wait out to see if a storm is rolling in, and it kind of seems like it is. So probably not wise to stop it. Yeah, it's a good thing we're going down. Things are getting spicy very quickly. But you know what? The hikes where things don't go according to plan are usually the ones that you remember the most. So no complaints and our safety is more important, whoa, than summoning. All right, need to stop recording. And naturally the sun comes back out immediately after getting back down to the trail. When you're in the mountains, you have to constantly weigh the risks of your actions, especially when you're in a group. Yes, it can be hard to turn around when you're so close to your destination, but as I said, our safety is more important than bagging a summit. Not ready to head all the way back down to camp just yet, we took a pit stop at another lake that we passed on the way up to relax and take in the view. Chase, who is unable to let any fish, I quote, escape his wrath, spotted a pool of water and declared it to be fishy. The crew stopped so he could toss a few flies into the crystal clear run. Despite the fishiness, Chase was unfortunately left empty handed. Back at camp, we all treated ourselves to a much-deserved Mississippi mudslide ice cream sandwich. Before we knew it, the 4th of July was upon us. We decided to have a chill day at camp to avoid the crowds and make a festive little spread of food. 
In the quiet moments, Chase worked on the last of Owen's birthday present, which was a collection of flies tied by the master himself. While dinner prep was going on, the crew danced around camp to our version of patriotic music by the likes of Lenny Kravitz, Leonard Skinner, and Outkast, of which I'd love to play for you now if I wouldn't get slapped with copyright infringement. So you will instead have to settle for this random song we found on the internet. It's days like this that make us extra thankful for these people. We didn't have to do anything overly elaborate for the holiday. We didn't even have to leave our campsite. And yet, it felt so special. I think that just means that we found our people. Next time on A Summer Adrift. Everybody in the back seat. Nona, look at you, you're being so good.